Hi, my name is Gopi, and Gopi Serenini, President and CEO of company Axiaro. We are a cybersecurity hardware company. We make chips and also the cards and to data centers, networking market. We're around 100 people company and five year old, and we are complying to pretty much every standard in the market. Uh, headquarters in San Jose and offices in Hyderabad in India and also Taiwan. What are we solving? There is a big problem of ransomware in the market. What is a ransomware? Ransomware is nothing but somebody bad actor came into your system. However, the way he came into it and he takes over your system as a super user and asks for ransom. Or he encrypts your hard disk and looks for ransom again. In both cases, he's touching the most of the hardware systems, hardware control and management side. Present solutions, all of them, 99% of the companies, if not uh, hundreds or thousands, all of them are addressing to protect at the port of entry of the system, means bad actor coming into your system, whether it's a kernel level, whether a firmware level, they're trying to protect that at port of entry. What we do, we are a complementary to that. Even after the port of entry is not able to stop it, and we are the last line of defense standing at the platform, and which is last line of defense, the bad actor coming to, as we just talked about, to the hardware platform or hard disk. That's where we detect and protect right while it is happening, not after the fact. Today's most of the software solutions are now after the fact something happened, we can detect and stop. That's the company back. There are trillions of dollars spent on this one, and I don't need to belabor these numbers. So in these conditions, what happened? Just talked about attacks. If there is an, a ransomware attack, unfortunately, there is no recovery. If you care about the content on a platform, you had to pay the money to the guy, and you got the system back. Once you got the system back, unfortunately, this was a super user attack, and you don't know what exactly happened, how the bad actor came in. So the 99% of the times you had to throw away the whole system and then not only the productivity lost, system costs, replacement costs, all that money happens. And there's, as we talked about, there is no forensic data how we came in so that these systems cannot be protected in the future on whatever the way these guys came in because you don't have a data. After even recovery, there is a lot of delayed patch you have to file to the federal government and everybody has to be aware of what exactly happened or some level of that. And you have to share with everybody. With all that information to come to every person, let's say there's an attack happened in an X company, for me to be as a CISO to knowing that company happened, the reporting process and all that takes around 90 days. And I will know the attack type in 90 days as a CISO for my company. But the patches and everything, it takes another 90 days for to fix it. Means I'm vulnerable for close to 180 days uh, or more. Present solutions are all piecemeal and discreet. And the only solution something in the market today is against like these are called zero, zero trust. These zero trust means that you don't trust the application or any platform. Every time you run an application, you want to be attested again, authenticated again. Unfortunately, if there is your so-called root of trust or main key itself is compromised, doesn't matter how many times you ask as a zero trust model you will be able to answer. Bad actor, you will be able to answer. That's where we come into the picture. We make that so-called hardware root of trust true immutable hardware root of trust, make sure that that's protected highly. That's where our company comes into. And we're a complementary, again, we're complementary to every solution in the market, Palo Alto, the world, CloudStrike, the world, Snowflake, the world. We are complementary to that. Here is a pictorial view of the pay, you know, uh, what we do, in, because we end of the day, we make silicon our cards. If you look on the left side, uh, there are, pay attention to my cursor, uh, there are network ports and also the management ports. Just to give the history, these network ports are connected behind a firewall and your user, let's say if this is a Yahoo server, www.yahoo.com, a cloud will you know do a mapping, name mapping server will con convert you into this firewall and you come to this data a uh, particular server through that network port. For the last decade or so, firewall is proven to be not enough security or it's a perimeter security only. Then everybody in the industry decided to uh, create a, something called DPUs on the data port. 
And that's, that's the DPA, you know, deep packet inspection, et cetera, to protect those data pools. In the world of already accepted on this DPU, let's focus on the management port. Those management ports used to be only on an intranet only, means your IT guy is sitting within the house, within the building, within the premises, within the intranet, subnet itself. But the world changed for last half a decade to a little more than that, and especially pandemic made more, that your IT guy is also on the cloud now. And he is also coming through the same firewall or similar firewall technology. Our premises as company is simple. If the world accepted the firewall is not good enough security to be network ports protection, and we created another DPU in there, how in the world we are okay with a management port, which is more sacred for you to be exposed to the same firewall technology and pray God that it will take care of it. You need a, a DPU-like device on the control and management side. That's where we come into picture. Our product is called Trusted Control and Compute Units, called TCUs. We do similar of a DPU function, but a lot more because this is a key, key management, attestation, all that stuff works. Today, you see that there are discrete components who is addressing the solution today. I won't say solving, but addressing. Uh, TPM, Trusted Platform Module, you see the red dots on the left side picture. BMC, Baseboard Management Controller, a ROT, Root of Trust, LAN and Motherboard, and possibly FPGA and firmware combinations. All these chips come from different companies, and these are all on the motherboard. If there is an attack happens, you have to get the patch from all of these guys. And this is an old school legacy at a band-aid solution. As a Oxiaro, we came up with a company, TCU. We integrate functionally all these five or four chips and a plus the PGA combination plus the firmware into a single chip as a TCU. We also work with the industry standard, the open compute platform guys. Everybody logos are listed here. All of these guys are, you know, advocated to a modular management NIC, similar to the data NIC, you need a management NIC. That's called now DCSCM, Data Center Secure Control Module. And you can see the right side picture, that's Intel-based DCSCM. You can see that's double stack uh, card itself and all. Our card is smaller, you can see in there, functionally integrated. I'll jump to the image of that and come back in here. So if you look at this is what the present card looks like and which is double stacked and bigger. In physical comparison to the scale, you can see how our, how our card looks, that's our chip. We're one third the power, one third the size, but 20X powerful on a computing, plus I have AI engines on top. I'll talk about that AI engines, what we saw. Going into jumping back to what problem we are solving. We give a platform security, I'll talk about the AI, how we do with that, and how we protect against side channel attacks, supply chain attacks, ransomware attacks, image manipulation attacks, and infiltration attacks, and lifecycle management, all that stuff will do, will go through that. So we make a platform security because we, we're residing on the platform physically, not the cloud-based. We can still authenticate through the cloud HSM, but we are on the platform at the boot time, at the runtime, and network security. The Ethernet ports on the control and management port, what is exposed behind the firewall today, unfortunately, there is no firewall security. We have a hardware firewall security boosted by AI, able to detect even insider attacks. Means your IT guy turns into the bad actor. I'll be able to detect that based on the behavior and learnings and what the behavior, what he's touching, how the attacks are coming and all that. We'll be able to detect that. Means we're the only company in the market today can tell you that where there is no physical security, we'll be able to detect based on what's happening there. And then you can put the rules engine on top as a system vendor, whether you want to stop or just collect the forensic data. Boot time security. Today, when it's booting up, uh, today's BMC and every other solution is a dumb CPUs. That was meant for done for 24 years ago. Uh, when they're booting up itself, there's hackers are becoming smarter. They share these things to be outside and how you manipulate the image, how do you able to give a side channel glitches, et cetera. But you need an intelligent processor, intelligent technology to be able to accelerate the computing level. So we have an AI-driven boot time security. We're able to monitor every signal on the board, every attestation, 
a contextual awareness we know based on that we can detect that and then all that zero zero trust uh, security provided by everybody else we become an authentication attestation for that making it a true zero trust on that and operational security life cycle management anytime these devices every platform has a social security number type which is the your root of trust key manufacturing time it was programmed and that's is for the management of life cycle pretty much that is used for authentication of your system every time the problem it is it it's uh, programmed by somebody at a manufacturing time it's not trustworthy completely and every deployer csp cloud service providers wanted another level of life cycle management ownership transfers we have a proprietary way of doing it a patent algorithm with a secure way how we can do the operational device cycle management ransomware attacks as i talked about ransomware attack is nothing but somebody taking the hardware over we trained our ai engine completely going through the existing cvu database reported uh, vulnerability sort of them and we collect the hardware traces the data sets how does the bad actor look in each attack in a hardware traces that's trained to our ai engine and it's able to detect any time that kind of blacklisted pattern is happening and we'll be able to stop that again there's nobody can do that today and it continues to be learnable means we can teach more update these models we do the inferencing on the chip and collect at the cloud and then able to do the models training on the cloud and push it back so this is the on chip infer- inferencing for us and it has the neural engines inside so anything of so called you know there is no true zero day attack we should be able to learn based on the what is being trained already and predict something close to it and we based on the neurons and we could stop more than what has been already trained can i say 100% obviously nobody can say that but we're much better than the human trying to do a, a logical engines or software doing it versus a neural engine doing it here that accelerator computing advantage is being used in here so we can do the last two of them dynamic thermal management and rack, rack level so if we are on each blade or each server on a rack we have a proprietary rack level management that we, if one person detects something and you know, a one blade detects something happen bad in an anom- anomaly detection it's able to share between the full rack and we can detect through the, to share through the network switches top of the rack switches or firewall based on that we can detect everybody you can isolate so every ciso would love to have this to detection and isolation normally takes close to 30 to 40 days we can do it in 30 to 40 seconds okay and the last one is the dynamic thermal management today whole rack if you know the pue total dollar spent more than 50 cents or 45 cents are spent on the power management of the rack and the whole server itself we are all the server fan controls and thermal management happens based on the a sensor thermal sensor today we can add on top of the thermal sensor based on the load management we can change the fans and fan controls this way we presented in one of the one of the uh, forums recently and it's public data we can get around 18 plus percent of pue efficiency and that this should save a lot of money for the overall ciso deployment with that said uh, i will leave it to this uh, we have a multiple different form factor cards you can see on the left side this is uh, we showed at a gtc conference these are nvidia iff internal form factor card on the left side of the red version that's for all nvidia mgx platforms and further and we contributed the second card which we showed 3001 that's contributed to the ocp it's available for anybody to download and uh, implement themselves and the third one which is 3002 in here and that's a standard dcsm horizontal card it's available you can swap an existing systems with this and uh, 3003 is the smallest form factor card for us what i showed a comparison uh, that's functionality was everybody does exactly the same thing it's a different form factor the last one not the least uh, customers came up and asked for the pci based card also so this is being used as the a data security completely all the way to the edge system whether it's a medical iot industrial iot just swap the plug in card we will provide the security all the way to the end uh we're working with all the companies on the top able to get their security expansion software all the way to the edge device
Uh, finally, to summarize, what we do is we give a forensic data, which is not available today by anybody, and we can detect the anomaly and isolation within 30 to 40 seconds compared to 30 to 40 days. We can do the key management and ownership provisioning. This will help us the modularity and also sharing the systems and reusability and also shifting one to other for co-located data center guys. Resiliency, as we talked about, we can recover. We can update these models, and it's a future proof. Uh, it's an AI model, which is, can be attested you know, runtime to also. We can work through that. That means it's future uh, enabled proof. I won't say 100%, but we can make it a lot better than what is today, hardcore. And we talked about thermal management that we can give you a lot of PU improvement. So thank you. If you need to learn more about it, you can reach out to us or you know send us an email, reach us at any of the forums, meetings, conferences, uh, reach out to me and you know, my number, I'll leave it there, here. We don't have a direct competition in the market today. It's all discrete components and most of the NIH type, you know, everybody's built their own solutions. Everybody believes that they have their own solution, but until we prove uh, plugin card swapping to show our value, and they can see so far has been our customer support partners have been great. They see a value, we'll continue to work. And we're looking for uh, more customers, obviously, and also we are hiring, be part of the industry changing technology. Please do reach out to us. Thank you.